Okay, Parmi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I may know your name, but the boy who's sitting in classroom eight. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm I didn't rename myself. I'm sorry. I, I didn't rename myself, but okay, I couldn't hear your name. I was just asking your name. Aditya. Aditya. And Sneha, can you please uh, switch on your camera? It was possible. Sneha, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Sneha, is it possible for you to switch on your camera? Yes, ma'am. Just can you hear me? Is it here? Okay, Aditya, Pahi, and Sneha, if it is possible for you, you just take out your, um, Aditya, can you please keep your phone back, please, for the class? Thank you. 
and you just need one pen or, or a notebook or something which you have. And finally, if it is possible for you to put your camera still down, okay, so that you know it's pretty uh, easy for me to communicate. Thank you, bye. And Sneha, we are waiting for you. Okay. Um, well, I am Deepshika. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick introduction. And uh, yeah, so I'm Deepshika and I was almost teaching in Dubai and US and recently I moved to India, that is Mumbai. And now, like today, this is my first class that I joined in the University of Tokyo City, take up a class in India. I, yeah, I was in India, I have taught in India also, but for a very brief period, like I mean, um, I would say different considering my career, I just taught for four years. In India, so that's uh, that's the thing. Okay, so I'll be taking your classes. That is uh, today's topic for your reading comprehension. I just want to know, and I just want you to interact. Be able to interact. Maya, can you just tell me? Can you just describe yourself in one minute? Who are you and you know, can you anything? My name is. Uh, I just want to introduce. Me. Okay. Yes. My name is Neha Chaudhary, and I'm in class twelve. I study in uh, Balwarti Public School, Khargon. I'm a commerce student. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Kahi Upadhyay and uh, I'm in college first year at Phillies. And even I was a commerce student. Good Commerce student. My name is Aditya Ayer and I'm an XYC student at RA Pudar College of Commerce and Economics. I study commerce. So you all are not commerce students, even though I study commerce. That is a great adventure of course. Okay, so Pahil, Aditya and Sneha, we just need to be very, um, you know, you need to communicate if you don't understand something. And this is something really comprehensive. It's really easy. Okay, it's really simple. It's just that you don't need to know some strategies. Okay, then how are you exactly? Because I'm sure um, Aditya, Pahir, Sneha, Sneha, I'm sure you've done a reference to context in your, um, you know, when you were in grade 6, grade 7, grade 8. Do you remember your reference to context? What do you remember? Aditya, what do you remember from reference to context? Some, some things used to come in English exam and all these things. Summary of the passage. Yes. And uh, how do you used to identify the answers? Like, what was your strategy when you had to identify the answer? Keywords. Yes, keywords, okay. What else? Like, for example, if the question comes, uh, if the question comes that, you know, you need to find a word which is closest, um, you know, in the essay or in the comprehension or something. So how do you find it? What's your mindset? What's your strategy? Yes, absolutely, okay, everything is correct. Bahi, what's your strategy? Closest to the word or something. I read the paragraph and then try to find the word. Okay, read the paragraph and try to find the word. Okay, I mean that's a strategy. If you usually follow in schools, right? That is when you do a school education and all. How about the strategy? Like for example, if I say like the comprehension is of course not school level. Okay, the comprehension is something like an entrance exam because you will be doing giving an entrance exam. So all those uh, things, you could find all the answers are correct. Almost all the answers are correct. So what strategy would you apply? I need to know from you, of course. Like something, everything is similar. What to do now? What would you do? Use your brain. Think, think, think. Come on, Aditya. I'm sure you can think. Sneha. Um, there are some usually main points in a passage. So if you can figure out what is the theme that it's trying to echo? Then probably the answer will be easier to find. And how about those, uh, you know, have you ever heard the strategy that, you know, you chalk out the answers, which are, you strike out the wrong answers. Have you ever done that strategy? Yes, you strike out the wrong answers and then you finally got the right answer. So this is also one of the strategies which you use, uh, you know, to identify the answer from the reading comprehension. Why I'm saying all these things is because there are, whatever I'm teaching you today, it's just that, see, you guys have already done 12th or are in 12th, okay? You don't need the basic things of reference to context of the reading comprehension. What you just need to know is the right strategy, right way 
you get the right answer. That's all. And also the condition is attached to it because the time limit, because it's limited time, you get it for one answer. So you won't be able to do it, uh, you know, you're just sitting with reading comprehension for three hours or four hours, not, nothing like that. Okay, so today in this class, we'll identify some of the strategies. What should we opt for to exactly, um, you know, take the right answer in the comprehension, clear? So this, if you can see the first slide over here, so in reading comprehension, these are the basic types of questions that you will be finding in your questions. Some are direct questions. Say, what is direct That's for you? Yes, ma'am. Sneha, what is direct? What, what do you think was direct? Uh, Ma'am, like direct questions, uh, like the answers are direct in the... Exactly. Uh, yeah. Straight away, right? And partly, if you could just give me, um, what do you think, what's your... Uh, Sneha, don't please switch off your camera. Uh, partly, what do you think about uh, indirect questions? Like, what would be your strategy to find out the answer to the indirect question? Indirect questions are like uh, in reference to the paragraph and which is not like directly given. It's something that you have to make out. So uh, we should have a proper idea of the paragraph so as to answer the indirect questions. I can see Ria has raised her hand. Hi, Ria. Hi, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, Ria. Uh, Ria, what's your yes, uh, Ma'am, according to me, indirect questions are not directly, uh, the statements are not given. Like they can state a few things about a particular topic and then like contradict the um, statements like what can be the feature of this or what do you think is a disadvantage or why do you think things like this happen? Like the answer is not stated that this is why this happens, but this may be a cause. Like this, it is given in the paragraph, and like you have to bring and comprehend the paragraph to answer it. Lovely, Ria. Ria, I have another question for you. Since you said something like this, yes, ma'am. Something like, for example, the question comes that you know, uh, the writer has uh, what is the writer's take? Okay, what's the idea behind the theme which is being given? So, how would you identify what's your strategy? Uh, Ma'am, a writer always talks about a particular place, person, or an event. If Good. the writer is stating the positive as well as the negative points, we can see that he's writing a sort of a report on that thing. But if uh, it is stating about only the good side or the bad side, we can say that the person is liking or disliking the particular thing. If it is about an event, we can like make out if he has liked the event that has happened or dislike the same. So that is the way we can find out. I agree with you, Sneha. Uh, Aditya, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Aditya, don't you think somewhere what Riya is talking about, so isn't she referring about the tone of the, uh, I mean, uh, the comprehension that, you know, if you have to identify the tone of the comprehension, then what is right or trying to say? So don't you think that she's trying to emphasize on the tone? Or what do you think? What is she trying to emphasize? The main idea, I guess. The, what is the central message? Central message. But how would you, my dear, how would you identify it? See, you the people... The concluding statement provides some knowledge. The yes. Last line. Yes. And that is what um, Pahi, Aditya, Riya, you all need to, and even, now. I don't know where is the girl... Um, Sneha, where are you, Sneha? And so all four of you, I think what you guys are trying to convey, communicate over here is that whenever you read the passage, the first line of the passage, always remember the first line of the passage will give you maximum answers. Okay, because the first line itself, you would understand that if the tone of the uh, person, tone of the author, see, most of the time, that's what happens. Okay, but you also need to be careful when I'm reading something. Sometimes what happens is the author is very negative in its approach at the start. And then at the end, while, uh, you know, talking, so it becomes very positive. So that also you need to read. It's not something that I just read one line and I'm done with that answer. It's not what I mean. I mean, what I mean is this. You just have to like read the first line, first two lines very carefully because you would find the tone. 
you can identify the tone, you can identify all the basic questions, is it a direct, is it indirect, or what are the meaning attached? That's all. And in your reading comprehension, make sure that when you read your answer question, you should know the meaning of every word. That's your first job to identify. That I know the meaning over here. This is the meaning. Now I can interpret very good. Clear? So these are the basic things which we will be identifying. So that is what we are doing in this class. That we are trying to identify the different types of questions. Which you can so if you can see over here, other than you don't need a textbook. As of now, you don't need a textbook. You can just close the textbook. You just need a notebook so that you can write it. So, do you know your flowcharts and everything? Like, well, how you make your flowcharts, types of questions, and then you make three um, flowcharts like direct, indirect, contextual, vocabulary. Can you do that side by side? Can you guys do that? Is that be okay for you? And don't write a full sentence or something. I think the presentation will be available to you. Just write one letter that is direct as D, Leah. Indirect as I and uh, C as contextual vocabulary based questions. That's all. So, other thing, yes, ma'am. I'm just bringing my notebook. Okay. Other thing, please open your notebook. Pardon me. And just write three letters. Just write types of questions. You can even put as T if you remember. See, this is how I do. You take a call. Okay. So, just write direct B, I, indirect, and contextual as C. So now you please, you know it, it's throughout the class we are revolving around these three things. Direct, indirect, and text. Now, it just takes a second to do it. Don't spend a lot of time. Okay? Why I'm saying is that when you go for your exam, okay, when you sit for your entrance exam, you just have to look at these notes, you're done. You don't have to worry about any other thing. Once you're done, just give me a thumbs up or just give me an idea. Priya, Bahi, Aditya, and... Uh, um, I'm good. I'm good. Sneha, I guess. Okay, so over here, as you people said it, as Ria, Bahi, Aditya, and even uh, Sneha was answering, the direct questions, you will obviously get the answer directly in the passage. Okay, this is not something which you need to write. In direct questions, you have to understand what you people told. That what is it all about? What the scope of the passage is? I think Ria explained this very well over there. That you know, you have to understand you know, that other said that you have to identify the central idea behind it. Okay, so that is an indirect question. So this is something important in the contextual vocabulary based questions. So you'll be given the word. So, like for example, there's a word, and you have to give a synonym or antonym or the usage of that word. That's a contextual based question. So for that, you need to read your comprehension properly. Okay, usually first four lines, first five lines. And whichever word comes in, what strategy? I told you that you need to know the meaning of everything. Right? And just write the synonym. What is the synonym? Aditya, what is the synonym? Similar word. Oh, awesome. And antonyms? Opposite meaning. So you guys know about these things, right? So can we move forward? Is it okay? Are you all clear with this much? Aditya, you're clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, where is Sneha? Sneha is not there. I'm there. Sneha, then switch on your camera, my dear. Ma'am, camera on. Okay, maybe I can't see any people together. Okay, so Sneha and Pahi, um, if you see a strategy over here, I think this is what everyone is clear that you have to understand what is the passage about and what we thought and all these things. So, this is what you need to remember that you have to eliminate the answers. It is possible, so you can just write the second strategy in your notebook. That is the first step was your flowchart. The second is, because what happens when we go for an entrance test, even when I went, we forget things. That what our strategies we do. Okay, so just write and eliminate. So you will always remember that you have to eliminate your answers. Okay, this is the next strategy. Okay, why first line? Why everyone says that you have to read the first line of every paragraph? Then you get the right answer. Can anybody guess? Um, it's basically the introduction of the whole paragraph. So it gives a basic idea about what it is talking, uh, when was it happened, all the five uh, questions it answers them. Awesome. So you can write number three as first line. After the class, I will be doing this uh, final summary. So I'm be needing your words. Okay, what all you wrote? That from the class, what have you understood? So Sneha, what have you written? Last word? Uh, first line. 
of the freedom of the wilderness boy eagles have the unique capacity to inspire people and foster in them a sympathetic attitude toward the needs of other threatened species clearly without that sympathy and the political will it in and the needs of more observed species will go unmet the uh, conservation needs of many of certain species can only be met by beginning with the conservation of this symbolic species the boy eagle so basically what pahi has jo, just told about it that is just talking about the eagles and you know how they have the unique capacities so why i am saying all these things so this is from the first line itself okay and they are also talking about the threatened species the attitude 
Okay. So now if you read your five answers over here, the five options, which one do you think is the most closest to it? Aditya, do you have any answer to this? I'm, I'm just reading the question in a minute. Uh, all the options. Um, no. Dia, Pahi, you all have to give me your answers. Okay, just uh, add. Yes, I'm just reading the five options. Yeah, take your time. Ma'am, probably option B. Okay, that's your answer, Aditya. Let's hear from Priya. Let's hear from Pahi. Let's hear from everyone. So, Aditya has chosen B. Aditya, why you have chosen B? What made you think of B? Why not C? The last line is stating the same thing. Okay. That's also one I, a strategy. It's a wonderful strategy to do it. I'm not saying this is the right answer, okay? Priya, Pahi, you still have time. And uh, uh, maybe option C. Option C, that's Priya's answer. Okay. Pahi, I'm waiting for you. And uh, Sneha. Even I also thought you I'm sorry, Sneha? Ma'am B. Okay. Let's hear from Paki. Yes, ma'am. Even I think it's B. Okay. So three people are saying B and one person is saying C. Okay. So this is the final answer. Now we have to see why Paki is saying B. Aditya has given the answer for it. Now what was your idea behind it, Paki? Ma'am, because it is clearly stated in the paragraph that uh, in accordance with uh, like saving the species uh conservating them so the first step should be taken so they should start with the conservation of boy eaters so that is what is mentioned option b okay and sneha what's your reason mom when i read the paragraph and then when i saw the options i elim i eliminated the options which i didn't feel that they are like fitting into it so then i thought it's b Okay, that's Neha's strategy. Ria, why C? Uh, Ma'am, because the paragraph is uh, basically talking about the endangered species and the sympathy needed to uh, like save them. And uh, out of all the options, I found C to be uh, the most well suited with what I thought. So I took option C. Okay. I would be showing you the solution. So you can see option B is right. Okay, however, Ria, um, it's not something, see, you were also right in your approach. The only little difference in your approach is, if you say, see the second part, the second part, uh, option which these people chose, they chose that this is the necessary step. Okay, so, and the third option says that the needs will go unmet. So what I'm trying to say is the author, what author is trying to say in the first line itself, itself it's about the attitude. Right, sympathetic attitude. So I need to first focus on something that is my con conservation has to be done. Then my second option would have been correct. So okay, if they would have asked you two options which are closer to it, then you can mention B or C. But technically, they will never ask. They will ask one option. Okay, so that's why it's clear. Yeah? So that's why I said that you focus on the first line. First line means first two lines. Idea you have to identify. Don't go with the. Don't get carried forward with your next two lines. Yeah. So can we go further? Is it okay, everyone? Pahi, Ria, Sneha, yeah. Okay, so we understood our why option B. So now, I'm sorry. Ma'am, uh, yes. anyone is there on offline in classroom? No one. No one, no, okay, thank you. Okay, so now you can see over here, that is, there are some questions based on the interpretation of tone. So over here, we have to follow the strategy which Ria used it. Pahi, Sneha, Aditya. What Ria did is, Ria did not, um, you know, only identify the theme of the paragraph, but rather she was reading the whole thing. Okay, so in this case, the Ria, your strategy would have been okay. That is, first I read, like, like say, for example, that first I was negative in my tone, but later on I saw that the, my, the third and fourth line and the fifth line is very positive in my tone. Okay, I'm trying to say a very positive thing about myself or about the paragraph or something. So then the answer would be positive. Okay, then I cannot say that I only have to focus on the first. So whenever the question comes on the tone, 
So don't get carried forward with your first two lines. Try and read the full paragraph. Yeah. So for you can write the fourth point in your notebook that whenever there is a tone question, so write tone and put an arrow over there and write down. So whole paragraph. So tone means what are you trying to identify? Writers. And writers emotions. Okay. So you can write down over there writers emotions. So basically you need to find out the emotion of the writer which you may not be able to find out only from your first line. Okay. You have to concentrate on your other lines also. Anushka, uh, Ria, Paki, Aditya, Neha, everyone is clear. Anushka is not clear, sorry. Yes. Okay. okay, let's go further. So you can read the following best passage. This passage will also come in your exam. I mean, this kind of passage will also come in your exam. We divide it by the tone. Uh, Aditya, may I please ask you to read this paragraph? Sure, ma'am. Traditional values are changing. We are aping the West and making monkeys of ourselves. While Hollywood is extolling the history of their own people and making epic movies like Gangs of New York, Pirates of the Caribbean, etc. Hollywood is busy itself with desperate attempts to make a mature American teen like movies and Hollywood flicks. While we concentrate on remixing songs and duplicating English videos, we are slowly stepping away from the path of originality and individuality. But while in the last generation there was just plain following of Western principles by the youth, there have been greater benefits. The youth today not only learn from the West, but they, like their great ancestors who built this nation, are combining this knowledge with our own culture. And now a time has come where the West is aping the East. Punjabi tunes, Desi styles, and Indian art has hit markets overseas and is making us known to the world. So while there is a change in well, there, is change, uh, there is a change, like I mentioned earlier, it isn't all for the worse. Okay, now before you go, what is the meaning of critical? What is critical? I'm important. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry? Rebuking, rebuking. Yes. And Pahi, any uh, optimistic? What is Pahi uh, optimistic? Uh, Ma'am, optimistic is like uh, something, like, uh, expecting something good to happen, good changes. So you mean this is positive? That's what you meant? Okay. Sympathetic? What it sympathetic means? Uh, expressing disapproval. Okay. Okay, emotional or uh, touch or something like that. Hopeful? I'm, I think something good to happen. Yes, I, I mean, hopeful is pretty easy, right? I have a hope from this something, something like that. Okay, what is the next uh, word? Denounce, denouncing, right? I cannot see. Denouncing, anyone? If you people don't know, you may please Google. Because these are some basic things. Okay, all of us know. Denouncing, you can do it. Condemn. Okay, that's what you think. Okay, what is pessimistic? Pessimistic. Negative thinking. Negative. Yes. So now we know it that uh, we basically what we have to identify from this paragraph is if the person is very critical about it. Okay, like very, you know, the way Aditya said it, that, you know, is this right, is this wrong, criticizing, critical in that approach. Okay, or is he very positive in his approach? Or is he hopeful that something will happen? Or is he very negative in his approach? That is what you have to identify. So that's that's why we always see that the, what are the words which are being given. I need to first, uh, you know, figure out the meaning of it. Is it positive? Is it negative? Always remember, you see all the past papers, the past papers are revolving around these things only. Because the tone will always be like that. Okay, the tone will not come from somewhere else. Either they will say emotional. What else will I say? Or they will say that somewhere that, you know, the person is very angry. So these are the only words which will come. So don't worry that, you know, something else will come in exam. Nothing will come. You see the past papers also. You'll find the same things. Okay. So you can see what is the extract talking about. Other people, what is the extract talking about? Is it positive? 
positive, negative, or uh, critical, sympathetic. Everyone has I think it's both critical and optimistic. Okay, Aditya's answer is A. Let's go with Sneha. Yes, mommy. Okay, another A. Third, Pahi. Come on, don't go with Aditya. You tell me your logic. No, mama. Even I think it's mama, either, I in the start, in the starting of the paragraph, it is like uh, criticizing about the remix of songs and the movies that are uh, taken from Hollywood. The idea, and then after that, they are expecting like good changes that now we are showing up our these styles. So pretty logical. What Pahi is saying, I'm not saying it's the right answer. Okay, Ria. Ma'am, same. I also think it's option A. Okay. Now you people know what it's option A. Let's see what they are saying. Okay. What do you think is the right solution? What is the right? Uh... The author started with a very negative tone. That's what you people told. Okay. He changed his tone. That is by giving the example of the last generation. That is what today youth is doing it. Okay, even though he was complaining about the last generation, but he's saying today it's it's a so started on a negative tone, ended on a positive note. So there is a combination of there is a combination of two tones, right? So which is the answer, right? Finally, which is the answer? Optimistic, critical, and optimistic. Clear? Is everyone clear with this? Are you in doubt, maybe? No, yes. no. Okay. Ria, Sneha, Aditya, all clear? Everything? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now we can see over here another thing. You remember we did third thing, contextual vocabulary based questions? You remember that what is this? Ria told something about the contextual vocabulary based question that something had to be done. What is that, Ria? Whenever there is a contextual vocabulary based question, Aditya, what does that mean? Find synonyms, antonyms. Yes, that is the similar meaning or something like that, or near yes. that closest to it. So that means contextual vocabulary based question. Whenever there is a question about the closest thing, okay, who will read? Pahi will read, or uh, another uh, Sneha. Sneha, you are there, na? Yes, ma'am. A seemingly insatiable appetite for seafood, delicious like smoked salmon, king prawns, and grilled sea bass, has in inevitably contributed to a sharp reduction in ocean fish population. As many commercial boats frequently returned to shore with empty nets, it became clear that supply was starting to run significantly short of an ever increasing demand. But then came a potential solution uh, in the form of tr uh, tried and true method of food production, farming. Today, while traditional ocean fisheries remain in decline, commercial fish farming is booming and premium fish remain on menus worldwide. Ingenuity and flexible thinking made a seemingly doomed resource more sustainable. Lovely, more sustainable. So over here, they talk about the word sharp. Can you see the word sharp over here? Yes. Which line do you have? Mom, third. Third line. So they talk about the sharp reduction. Somewhere they're talking about the reduction. So over here, the word sharp in paragraph most clearly means, can you read the four options? Piercing, intense, abrupt, appreciable. Yes. So which one do you think? Aditya, let's do your Sneha first. Sneha, what's your answer? Maybe it's okay. You can try. Non piercing to for sure nahi hai. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think appreciable. So you tell me option. Which one? D D. D. Okay, so Ria says option 
Um, ma'am, I'm still not sure. I'm re going through the paragraph yes. again. Okay. Ma'am, just a moment. I'll re go through the paragraph. Please take your two, three minutes because you'll be getting to examples. Nothing to read. Huh? Ma'am, maybe option B, intense. Option? Option B. B. B for Bombay. Okay. Next, uh, Sneha has given the answer. Riya, Aditya, what's your answer? Ma'am, intense. I'm sorry? B. B for Bombay? Yes. Okay. Next, uh, I have a, um, I have a confusion between C and D. C and D. Okay. Okay. Now C, D, D, D. That's what A. No one in no one in says in A. A is not there as of now. Right? You people said it that A is definitely not there. Piercing, of course, is not possible. Now. Just tell me that what is the theme? What is in first three lines? What are you trying to understand? What is the author trying to communicate? What are they saying? Are they talking about the reduction? Can you see the third line? Can you yes, see? Yes, the author is talking about the reduction in the ocean population because of uh, the appetite for seafood. Or seafood. So they, he's somewhere saying that it's because what you were saying, because we're talking about the meaning. See why I said third line, please I, I try and identify. I said it third line because the word is in the third line. Okay, otherwise I would have never mentioned third line. Since the word is sharp, which is mentioned over there, that's why I said please identify what is the meaning which is being attached. So what you people said is that Ria just now said it, that there's a reduction in the ocean fish population, which is absolutely correct. Okay, this is the right idea. That is the, what the theme which they are talking about. So you can, and why is it? Because there was an ever increasing demand. So you can always see the demand which has been mentioned over here. Since there's more and more demand, what people told? So that's why there is a decrease, right? That's why there is a decrease. This is clear, theme is clear. Okay, so now the next thing is also mentioned over here. Um, that's why it doesn't mention. But then, okay, now read the next lines as instead of it. We have understood the reduction. The commercial boats frequently returned. Okay, it being clear the supply was starting to run significantly. But then, read the last line. But then, Aditya, can you just read out the last line again? But then there came a potential solution. But, uh, but then came a potential solution in the form of a tried and true method of food production, farming. Today, while traditional ocean fishery is in decline, commercial fish farming is booming and premium fish remain on the menus on menus worldwide. Ingenuity and flexible thinking has made a seemingly doomed resource more sustainable. Okay, very good, Aditya. Why I focused on this thing is whenever, please write down the next strategy, write down the fifth strategy. Whenever the question comes that you have to find the meaning closest to that, nearly or closest or something like that. Please also read the tone. Sometimes the question is technically based on the tone because closest to so refer to the tone of the author. Tone of the author in the sense, how I know it? Now Pahi will say, how do you know why it's by tone? Okay, why? Because the options are talking about tone. Am I abrupt in my approach? Okay, am I very abrupt? Am I... Uh, was I appreciative about the approach? Was I very intense in my paragraph? Like, you know, when I'm talking about I'm, I'm very intense or am I fierce? So this is what you're identifying. So why I said Aditya to read this? Because initially I am talking about the reduction in the ocean fish population. 
but after that i'm very appreciative about it that at least you know uh, now this thing there's a potential solution to it so i'm very positive about it is everyone clear about it so what is the right answer now i gave you the hint what is the right answer Pali, what's the right answer? Just said the word. I am very. Option B. Option D. D for dog. Yes. Thank you, Pali. So option D is the correct answer. Why? Because I am being very appreciative about it. That even if there was a sharp reduction, but there is a significant increase. Because there is a solution which has been come, which is already there. Are we clear? Alte, Bahi, Ria, and uh, uh, Sneha. Yes, ma'am. Sneha, are you clear, my dear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you're not clear, please let me know. Okay. But if you think that I need to slow down or something like that, you have to communicate there and then itself. Okay. Because later on, we hardly have time. Go back to same things and all these things. A lot of things which you have to come. Okay. So, shall I proceed further? So, uh, before we proceed, Sneha, which are four, five things you've written in your notebook? Quickly tell me. Uh, Ma'am, first one was that flowchart. Mm -hmm. Second one is flowchart B I C, Bhana. Okay. Yes, second okay. one is L. Huh? What is D? Direct, indirect, and contextual. Contextual based question. Pahi, what is the second uh, point in your notebook? Elimination. Elimination. That I've learned. Aditya, what is the third point in your notebook? Um, central message. First line, right? Central message. Central message you are identifying from the first line. First line. Usually the first line. Okay. And fourth, um, is it good? Oh, what the name? Sneha Pahi Ria. Ria? Yeah. Ma'am, yeah. the fourth point was uh, to know the tone, we have to go through the whole paragraph. Yes. And the fifth, Pahi? Reading the tone. I'm sorry? To read the tone. By exactly. which questions am I supposed to read the tone? Ma'am, to find the closest meaning. Awesome. Good. 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 Clear, easy. Entrance exam will be really easy, I'm telling you. It's it's it just cure your keep of five things before the entrance exam. Just read your notes and go and be confident about it. Okay. And start reading newspaper. Okay, I don't know if you people read newspaper. Start reading newspaper. Sometimes they pick up the paragraphs from there. Okay, some articles or something like that. And while I'm saying newspaper, at least you find out the right meaning about if you don't know something. So you just Google it. I mean, Google is so common nowadays. So you can even Google it in two minutes what exactly the meaning is. Let's go to the next type of question. Okay, really bad news. Okay, so we have already option B, we have done the solution. Now there is another type of question which is inference based questions. Again, inference based question, what do I need to focus on? Writer's emotions. Maximum questions you will find about the emotions. Okay, from your options itself, you'll find the emotions. Or I'm trying to understand the central theme from the first line itself, which are they clearly told by this kind of the start itself that I'm trying to identify the central theme. So you can see the inference-based questions. What are inference-based questions? Inference-based question is not only about one word. Okay. Why I'm saying the word inference? Because you will be having the full lines also for that options. Because sometimes one word is still, I think it's easier to identify. You know, but it's like the tone you have to identify in your line. So who is left? Priya, Sneha, read it. Priya, you read it? No, ma'am, I did not. Oh, if you could just start, please. One New York publisher has estimated that 50,000 to 60,000 people in the United States want an Anthony that includes the complete works of William Shakespeare. And what accounts for this renewed interest in Shakespeare? 
Scholars point out that the psychological insights he portrays in both male and female. The paragraph best supports this statement. Yeah, so you people read, take three minutes. Okay, don't be in a hurry. Give the correct option now because you've got a lot of exposure now. Remember what to identify. Okay, now this is the paragraph you have to do it. Come on. Now this time nobody will say the answer. What you will do is, Pahi, Priya, Sneha, at one go itself and ask you to put the answer on the screen. Just write the option because I don't want you to get influenced. No one has to get influenced. Okay? And other clear. Clear? So I'll tell you when to exactly show on the screen. Take three minutes. Once you're ready, you can just raise your hand. That's all. Riya is ready, Aditya is ready, Sneha and Pahi. When they are ready, we start. Sneha is ready and Pahi is ready. Pahi is ready. Okay, Pahi is also ready. Now, Pahi, Riya, Sneha, and Aditya, please write the answer in your notebook. Just write A, B, C, D, E, whatever you think is the right answer. And once you have once written it, just raise your hand. Or you can unmute it, tell me you have written it. Riya has written it. Aditya, you wrote it in your notebook. Yes, yes. Okay, Sneha has written it. And how about uh, Pahi? Where is she? Sneha, Ria. You're done? Can I start, Pahi? Can you unmute? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if you could just now quickly show it on the screen what you have written. One go. Okay, I can see Pahi's answer. Sorry, Sneha's answer. Pahi. One second, one second. Let me just write it. Sneha, can you just show it again? Sneha wrote. Okay. Pahi Priya wrote. Okay. Pahi. Oh, I can't see the answer, Pahi. Okay, Pahi, I can see. And Aditya? Um, can I just say it? I, I don't think you'll be able to say it from here. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's option D. Wow. Now I have the answers. That is Neha wrote B, Ria wrote A, Pahi wrote C, and Aditya wrote D. All different. A, B, C, D. So now you will make it's A, B, C, D. Now just let's read it once more. So here, let's see the New York publication uh, publisher. What is he trying to say? He's trying to some, somewhere identify there are some 50, some people, that's few people are there. They're all in the US. 
okay and uh, they basically want an anthology that includes complete works of william shakespeare this much is clear so the, he wants this thing and uh, what accounts for this renowned interest in Shakespeare? Why? What is so interested in Shakespeare? Why only Shakespeare? Okay, so basically he portrays uh, psychological insights. Okay, so characters are even, Shakespeare characters are more interesting. Okay, this is one of the reasons he said. People today are interested in Shakespeare's work. Okay, academic scholars are putting together anthology. New Yorkers have a renewed interest and Shakespeare was a psychiatrist as well as a Right. Let's eliminate the option. The strategy which uh, who explained the elimination? I think Sneha was the one. Sneha, were you the one no? eliminating this the answer? Yes, ma'am. Let's see okay. here. Let's see. I'm so sorry to name it. Let's see why Ria, your answer is wrong. Okay, Ria, are you there? It's absolutely okay to be wrong. Yes, ma'am. If you are wrong, then only you will be right in your exam. So it's okay. okay. So, so let's see why Ria cannot be your right answer. Ria, what is the reason which is given? Read out quickly, please. Uh, Ma'am, it is given that A cannot be the right answer as the passage does not discuss about the fictional characters. Exactly. So Ria, have you ever, did you ever find a word fictional character in your passage? No, ma'am, but because it was given like characters in Shakespeare's play are more uh, relatable to people these days, I thought it can be. Okay, no problem. Okay, now let's see C. Pahi. Pahi, can you see C? Yes, ma'am. Read out why it is not a right answer. Uh, the passage mentions that people want an anthology, but doesn't mention whether scholars have started working on it or not. You're getting it? Because it always says that they have started working on it. That's why it's the wrong answer. Okay, now let's go to option D, Aditya. Why it is not a right answer? The para mentions that one New York publisher has estimated the number of interested people in the US and there isn't any direct reference to the people of New York. Therefore, it cannot be the right answer. Got it. You understood why it is not the right answer? Okay, now Sneha would read it why her answer is correct. Right, Sneha? Or no, yes. my reason may people today in Shakespeare work because of the characters. Now let's go to the first why option B. Let's just go back and read the paragraph once again. Why is Sneha is correct? Let's find out. Because it says that the 50,000, 60,000 people are there. They want the complete work of William Shakespeare. And what accounts for this renewed interest in Shakespeare? Why people are interested in Shakespeare? Because of the characters. Because characters. The, exactly. Because the characters in Shakespeare, then whatever the Shakespeare talks about. I'm sure you must have read something about Shakespeare. Is anybody done that? Any of the Shakespeare one? Uh, maybe like just an extract. Uh, yes. We had Shakespeare for two years. Merchant of Venice. Ah, Merchant of Venice. That's 9 and 10. You must have read, uh, read it. Huh? Read 9 and 10. Are you good? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma same. Ah, that's why. Because in ICS, you have this. So that's why they are saying that's basically because of the characters. Okay, Sneha? Okay, Ria, are there? Fine. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Shall we move further? I think this is better. Let's not get influenced by each other's answer. Okay. So let's do this thing only. Okay, this is do you guys want to pray for five minutes or something? I mean, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What's your design? What's your procedure? I mean, what do you guys do usually? Do you get a break? Ma'am, yes. after one hour, we get a five minute break and then the picture continues for the next one hour. So is it already one hour? It's 12. What's your time? What's your time? Uh, it is 11.30 to 12.30 and then 12.35 to 1.35. The second lecture starts at 12.35. Okay, so it's 12.30. Your watch also, it's only my watch. 12.30? Uh, no, ma'am, an hour also is 12.30. It's fine. It's 12.30 only, no? It's yeah? Yes, 
Okay, so you come back. You people can switch off your camera, eat something, come back within five minutes, okay? Switch off your camera, it's absolutely okay. Other thing, you can switch it off if you want. And even part. However, the other option uh, will be, uh, I mean, the three different, I mean, the three different uh, options and three other three options will be identifying another direction. So basically, you have to identify and which must, which will be the what sentence. Okay, so they will ask you the question. I'm sure you will give the example, you will understand. So you have to understand the odd answer. Okay, so you can see over here, sample question. Uh, Aditya, are you there? Okay, Sneha, you read it. Yes, ma'am. It has been suggested that the ants of each nest have some sign or passwords by which they recognize one another. To test this, I made some of them insensible. First, I tried chloroform, but this was fat fatal to them, and I do not fatal fatal to them, and I do not consider the test satisfactory. I decided to intoxicate them. This was less easy than I th than I had expected. None of my aunts would voluntarily degrade themselves by uh, by getting drunk. However, I got over the difficulty by putting them into whiskey for a few mo moments. I took 50 specimens, 25% from one nest and 25% from another, made them dead drunk, marked each with a spot of paint and put them on a table close to where other ants from one of the nests were feeding. The table was surrounded as usual with a moat of water to prevent them from straying. The ants which were feeding soon noticed those which I had made drunk. They seemed quite astonished to find their comrades in such a disgraceful condition as much as at uh, lost to know what to do with their drunk, drunk, uh, drunkards as we were. After a while, however, they carried them all away. The strangers they took to the edge of the moat and dropped into the water while they bore their friends home in the nest, where by degrees they slept of the effects of the spirits. Thus, it is evident that they know their friends even when incapable of giving any sign or password. Awesome. So, Sneha, what, was the, what do you think is the central idea behind it? What are they talking about? Mom, he wanted to know that, uh, like, will the and ants will be able to uh, recognize the uh, recognize their friends. Uh, even if they are, you know, intoxicated or something. Okay, that's different. Uh, okay, and Leah, what do you think was the idea behind it? Uh, Ma'am, they are talking about how ants communicate or connect with each other. Even uh, like he makes, like he first thinks that they may have a password or sign or something like that, and later it, he. Uh, test them and it is all based on how the ants communicate and talk to each other and later on how they help each other. Okay. And what about uh, Pari? Pahi? Pahi, what do you think? Uh, yes, ma'am, that they have 
like something that they can uh, recognize their members in any any ways like even if they are intoxicated or they are meat separate okay so yeah uh ma'am uh, and the author later on concludes like just like we can uh, recognize each other by our faces they can also recognize their friends and their uh, known without any uh, password or any sign okay aditya what do you think aditya very sleep when a long break okay so party is saying ha riya that is what you people think that is so here you can see over here the authors and includes of the inbuilt in abbreviated and support all of the following inductions except the statement so now in this that is what i was trying to explain you have to find out the odd one out three would be correct okay that is so you have to identify the fourth one the odd so do you think so and stay unwillingly to intoxicants Pahi, Sneha, Priya, you have to tell me yes or no for this. So I have to uh, basically I'm trying to identify odd one out and uh, similar. So you tell me which category am I supposed to put it? Pahi, what about the A? Which category shall I put it? You can take your time, okay? You don't have to be in a hurry. Pahi, Riya, Sneha, whenever you are ready, you tell me. Riya, ready for the odd one out? Okay. Or you write it in a notebook, Riya. Let's not get influenced. Sneha, Pahi, Aditya, all of you. Ma'am, can you explain what does induction mean? Is it like an inference? Which one, my dear? What does the word induction mean? Is it an inference? Okay. Tell me the where is it written? The, the author's anecdotes of the inebriated ants will support all the following induction. <laughs> does it mean an inference? Yes, all the following induction. That is the options or the inference or the uh, you know the idea. All the following ideas, except the statement. Where were you, Aditya? It took a long break. I'm sorry, ma'am. Actually, I had uh, muted uh, the audio, and I kept my volume to zero. So I didn't know when the class started. Okay, yeah, over here, basically, you started with the sample question that you have to identify the odd one out. I think uh, whenever you're ready, please raise your hand. Let me just get an idea. I think Riya is already ready. Uh, Sneha is ready. And Pahi and uh, Aditya. Take your two three minutes. Be sure about it. Yes, ma'am. Done. Yeah. Okay, that's done. I'll wait for party.
I'm done. Okay, good. Write down the letter, the odd one out in your notebook, the A, E, C, D. Other way, you don't have to write, I cannot see. Other way, please leave your phone, put it in uh, the back seat. Sneha, can you show me your letter? Which one? The, okay, the one which you're pointing it out. Okay. Okay, Sneha already told. Uh, let's hear Pahi. Pahi, I can't read it. I'm sorry. So I'm in the light. I think you switched on the light. Tube light or something. Can I send it to you in the chat box? Uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait. Then you wait, Bahi. Uh, Ria. Ria, let's see yours. Mama, I'm showing it to you. Yes, I got it, Ria. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Mama, I joined right now. I wanted to know what is going on. So I can continue with the lecture. Okay, Preeta. Yes, ma'am. Preeta, can you please switch on your camera? Is it visible now? Uh, one second, Bahi. Yes, Bahi, I can see that. Preeta, once you're ready with your camera, please let me know. Waiting. And uh, Aditya, what's your answer? I'm D. D for Bombay, D for dog. D for dog. Okay, some of our findings, Neha, Pahi, Ria, Aditya, all four are saying option B. Okay, Preetha, I am, Preetha, are you there? Mom, I don't know why my camera isn't working. Okay, no problem, Preetha. Uh, Preetha, okay, what we are doing is, as of now, what we did is, like, we'll give you the summary, we'll tell you, you know, Neha, Aditya, and I'm sure everyone will explain it to you, because we anyways have to uh, compile what we have done today. But for this lecture, that is for this section, what we are doing is that there is always one strategy, Rita, which we discussed, that whenever you are reading a paragraph, okay, like you are reading a paragraph, there might be a question that, you know, which is the odd one out? Okay, so the three, you can see A, B, C, D over here. So here are the three options you would find which is very closest to the question, is very closest to the passage. However, there's one option which is not closest to the passage, so that is what your job is to identify. Then which is not closed. Okay, so Preeta, you might find it a little difficult because we have done this exercise, I mean, you know, uh, for one hour 45 minutes so far, like one hour 15 minutes so far. So if you find it difficult, uh, immediately tell us. Okay, so we'll repeat it for you. Okay, okay. Preeta? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So Preeta, you can just read the paragraph with your ones. And then try to identify. Maybe from the next slide, you'll be able to take up. Okay? So, as of now, what's Neha, um, Pahi, Aditya, and uh, Ria? They have told that the answer is D. As for them, the option D is which is not which is the odd one out. Now, let's see the correct option. So, as of now, you find that Neha, Aditya, I can believe all four of you that you have got enough practice that all of you are in the same mode. That is option D. Any doubt till here? Sure. Are there any doubt? No, ma'am. Anything you want me to repeat? Pahi or uh, Sneha, um, Ria? No, no ma'am. Everything is... Okay. Awesome. Let's move further then. So this is your... Uh, Preeta, we are just doing the summary because we have done the class. And now, of course, we'll be practicing some of the passages. So let's do some of the summaries. It will be useful for you also, Preeta, and they will also get it. Anyways, they have to do it. So recap, which you got it. Okay. So uh, Sneha would explain the first slide. So each one of you have to explain one one slide. And Preeta, whenever you don't understand something, you immediately have to tell us. Yeah. Tell us. Okay? Yes, Sneha. Let's start from Sneha. Mama, I have to explain this slide. Uh -huh. 
I do, do you remember that we wrote the strategies and all these things so you can follow the slide and you can talk about it let's for example this is these are the type of questions which comes How, what do you do in direct what do you do in indirect what do you do in contextual campus? first two slides okay so you can just talk about it. I think I will get an option idea mom it's okay Sena. it's absolutely okay <laughs> Yeah. Come on. Yes. Ma'am, we made. Ma'am, strategy. Bolu ya explain karu. Explain. Ma'am, di. Uh, Ma'am, in direct. Uh, we have. Uh, we have. Uh, Ma'am, how to explain? Ma'am, I know, but how to explain? Okay. Ma'am, can I start? Yes, Priya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, how to so when we have to attempt questions for reading comprehension we encounter basically three types of questions which are direct questions indirect questions and the vocabulary based questions in the direct questions the answers are directly written in the paragraph um, and in the indirect questions we have to uh, use our thinking and make out what can be the answer they are not directly given to us in a sentence format we have to pick it out uh, from the paragraph and use our own uh, thinking for the same in the contextual uh, vocabulary based questions we have to go through the paragraph or the text again and uh, read the sentence which uh, contains the word and then uh, figure out from the options that which suits the best. Awesome. So, uh, Preeta, basically what they're trying to say over here is that since you would be identifying different types of questions in your exam, okay, so you just have to make sure that whenever there's a direct, direct sample is clearly given over there, so you don't have to worry about it. Right, what Ria was trying to explain in terms of indirect is, indirect is something you are trying to identify the theme of the paragraph. That is, you know, this is the theme, what is the talk, a writer talking about? So that's an indirect question. And if there is a question which is a vocabulary-based question, that's a closest answer. Okay, like we were doing it the closest answer, that what is the closest answer over there, or what is the closest meaning of the word which is being given. Clear, Brita? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is the slide which you discussed, which just Ria explained it to us. And then we also have this one of the questions that is main idea-based question. Preeta, remember in your exam, you won't find it like that something is written like main idea and all these things. Okay, but as we do the passages, we just did the passage, you would understand the how to identify this is what the class was all about. Okay, so you can see the main idea based questions. So, Aditya, can you just explain this quickly? What is this main idea based question? The first thing that we have to try to figure out is what is the central point. A message behind the every passage and then we have to analyze the answer based on it. Yes, and Preeta, the strategy to do it, what Aditya is saying is that usually you would find the theme in the first line itself. Okay, and Preeta, remember that there's a difference between a theme and a tone. Okay, you may not find the tone, like the tone is like, am I emotional, am I negative, am I positive? Okay, am, I, am I sympathetic? So you, you would be able to identify the tone in the first three lines or something, but you have to read the whole paragraph. Because I may be positive in my, at, at, you know, um, at the start, but I may be very negative um, at the end of the topic. Okay, so the answer okay, be, yeah. So this is what you have to do, but, but usually the theme, you will get it from the first line itself and what the talk, that writer is talking about. That is what just other things. Clear? Okay, yeah. Okay, so in here you can see these are the examples which we did in the class, Mika. I don't know if we have recording for the uh, sessions. Do we have recording? Yes, we have. Yes, okay. ma'am, we do have. Mika, whenever you see this recording over here, you basically what you would find is like we have given a passage over here and we gave some options. Okay, so in this option, what Ria and everybody was doing is they were trying to identify which is the correct answer. So, Preeta, what you can do is uh, when you sit for your, uh, even if you don't have go through the slide, uh, even if you don't have to go through the recording, what you can just do is you can go through these slides and try and write the answer in your notebook. Okay, like A, B, C, D, E. So put down in your notebook, that's what we were doing in the class, and write the correct answer. Then in the next slide, you can see the solution. Do you agree Yes. So this is what the closest thing which we did it. Solution. Then we also did the uh, about the interpretation of tone, which I just it to you. So in this interpretation of tone, writer's emotion, 
please don't get carried forward with the first three lines. Okay, if my first three lines are positive, but I'm negative, it means the last few lines, so my answer would be negative. My answer would not be positive. Okay. So you can see the passage over here. So we read this passage in the class and we're trying to identify that if the tone of the above extract. Now the strategy is whenever you see the answers, the options over here, try and first understand the meaning of these words. Then only you will be able to interpret the paragraph. So uh, Preetha, what, as per you, what is critical? I'm sorry? What do you mean by critical? What is optimistic? Critical but optimistic. Critical, I think, to have a critical thinking, logical thinking. Okay. And optimistic to have an overall idea. I think so, I'm not sure. Uh, can somebody tell us the meaning of optimistic and pessimistic? Priya, can you help me? Um, Ma'am, uh, ma I guess pessimistic was to have a negative opinion or approach. And optimistic was uh, to have a positive as well as a foresight. Okay. Uh, Preetha, you have Google? Yes. Quickly find out the meaning of optimistic yourself. And tell us the meaning quickly, Preetha. Optimistic, denouncing, pessimist. You have to tell us the meaning. So we discussed. It means expecting good things to happen. Optimistic. Yes. Okay, pessimistic? To expect bad things. Sorry, expect, expect? To expect bad things. Negativity. Okay, denouncing? Sorry? Denouncing? Can you see the option B, the first, first word? Option B, first word. Denouncing? I'm not sure. How do you find out? It means to say publicly that something is wrong. To, I'm sorry, to? To say publicly that something is wrong. Yes. Okay, so uh, so this is what we identified, Peter. The strategy is first, you should be knowing the meaning. Okay, and Peter, what we were discussing in the class, if you don't have to worry that, you know, what something else will come in your exam after all, see. My emotions could either be positive, negative, doubtful, you know, critical, sympathetic, that's all, right? So you don't have to worry that something else will come in your exam. Because if you see the past papers, past papers are revolving around these tones only. Okay, past, so don't worry much. Just try and see these words from your past papers and find out the meaning of it. That will only revolve in your exams. Okay? Yeah. So you can find, do this exercise later on. And this is what, these are the answers which are mentioned over there. That this is what we did in the class. Then we also did the answer that is the contextual vocabulary based question. Ria will quickly explain. No, Ria just now explained. Um, Pahi. Pahi will quickly explain it to us. Then what did we discuss this? Pahi. Mom, in this passage. My dear, you, uh, what did we discuss with the contextual vocabulary based question? How do we have to identify it? That's so in the con uh, contextual vocabulary, we discussed that we have to be appropriate with the words and we have to know the meanings of the words and in what way it is used in the passage. Exactly. So Rita, what she's trying to communicate over here is Pahi. She's saying the sharp. Can you see a sharp word in the third line of the paragraph? Yeah. Yes. So why we are talking about sharp over here. So basically the idea in contextual vocabulary based questions is like you can see the option. Okay, so they're talking about intense. Intense is an emotion. Approach, emotion. Yes, yes. Yes. So basically, I'm trying to identify the emotion, right? So, yes. so tone. So for tone, uh, so so since they are talking, the options are given for emotions. So what I'll do is in my paragraph, I'll find out the tone of the uh, person, tone of the author. So is the author very appreciative about things? Is the author very intense? Or was he very abrupt in saying something? Okay. So this is what you're trying to identify. So you can see over here when you will read it later on. See the sixth line. Can you see the sixth line? But then came a potential solution. 
Yes, ma'am. So, Pritha, that is what they're talking about. They're very appreciative about it. Right? So, option D would be your correct answer. Please do it later on, okay? Okay. And then we also talk, spoke about, discussed about the inference-based questions. And over here, you are basically trying to identify that the closest answer, okay, that's Shakespeare, why Shakespeare? So this is the exercise, again, exercise which we did in the class. That is the closest answer which you feel is there. Then we also did this, the odd sentence of the choices. I think this is what we did, you, you were there, no? So odd over here that uh, in which you would you just join Preetha over here. When Rhea, Pahi and Aditya and uh, Sneha, all four of them answered that the option B is the correct answer because they feel this is the, this is the answer which is, uh, you know, uh, odd one out over here, closest. Clear? Any doubt? Preetha, you got some fair idea that what was the class all yes, about? Yes, I got a fair idea. Okay, now what we have to do is you just have to open your textbook quickly and we are so we were supposed to do chapter 19 today. That is what we're doing. Uh, Pahi, do you have your textbook? Rhea doesn't have it, huh? Rhea, you don't have your textbook? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I have. Preetha, you have it? Aditya? No, ma'am, I don't have. I have it, ma'am. You have it? Okay. So what we are trying to do is we are just trying to see that we have covered everything or not. If you have not covered something, you can tell me now. So look at the first paragraph, first page, page number one zero five. Aditya, can you confirm if you have done everything? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Uh, Sneha, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Sneha, have you done? Have you done page number one zero five? Yes, ma'am. Zero five is the text part, right? Reading comprehension introduction. Yes, yes, dear. One zero five is that reading comprehension introduction. We are talking about doing that in this class or the previous class? Previous class, you guys haven't done reading comprehension, na? No, ma'am. Yeah, so I'm saying this class. We have covered this in our slides, na? We have done uh, main idea questions and the vocabulary, contextual vocabulary based questions, right? Sneha? Okay, now C106. So we have done uh, sentence simplification questions. Basically, you're trying to identify See the names, you might find it different, but technically things are same. Okay, like for example, identify the idea or argument. We have done that central idea and all. Aditya, Fahmi, Sneha, and since Ria doesn't have a textbook, you all need yes. to come. And factual based questions, have you understood? Important details of the passage? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, rhetorical purpose. If you've not done something, you can tell me now. I'll explain it to you. At least I'll mark it in my text. I'll explain. Ma'am, what it. is rhetorical? Okay, I'm pointing it out. Star mark rhetorical. We'll come back to this thing in this class itself. Okay, I'm marking it as star. Inference, have you understood? Inference we did, remember? Yes, yes, ma'am. Prose summary questions, have you understood? Yes, ma'am. Aditya Pahi? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Author's tone? Yes. Okay. Now see this, uh, this is something they're just talking about. Select one answer choice, multiple choice. This you can, I think this is something very basic. Uh, come to page 107. Strategy for answering reading comprehension questions. So this is what we discuss, read and analyze. This is something, distinguish ideas, identify the relationship. Are they contrasting, same emotions and all. Are you all clear till here? Sure? Okay. Now yeah. come to this uh, page number 108. Work on your vocabulary, improve reading. See, these are the ways. I mean, I told you to read the newspaper. It's like that. Try and find the answers and all these things. 
And have you done the central idea theme questions? Do you remember when Aditya was explaining that we have to identify the central idea by reading the first line? Remember, boys and girls? Yes. Okay. See page number 109. Do you know the meaning of explicit, implicit? Aditya, what is the meaning of explicit? Directly stated. Okay, implicit? Has to be inferred. Yes, indirect, taken. And uh, structure, do not be listed by minor details, focus on the key ideas, this is all clear. Focus on the first line, be mindful of the scope trap and all. Everyone is clear with page 109? Pahi? Yes. Yes. Okay. Come to 110. This we already did. The paragraphs strengthen your vocab, contextual vocabulary based question, remember? Yes. Okay, page number triple one. Are you clear with triple one? Read the sentence, think of the word, look at the answer choices and all. Yeah. Okay, come to 112. Inference based questions, are you clear? Okay, 113, are you people clear with this direct questions, explicit detail, or direct questions? And direct. And yes. for the reduction in the fish question, the answer to the word closest to sharp was not uh, intense, it was appreciable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then we did uh, explicit fact based direct questions. Are you clear with direct questions? Yes. Okay. Now come to page 114. Are you clear with this uh, author's tone? Identifying the author's tone and all? Yes. Yes. Okay. Come to page 115. We did this tradition values and all. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so till 115 is your this. This is again a practice experience. That is 116, which we'll do it now. Um, I think Sneha asked me something before that. Rhetorical question. Okay, basically in these type of questions, they say that what is the perspective, the central idea. You know, when I'm talking about some things, so there must be some central idea, there must be some perspective to it. What I'm trying to say, am I talking about the endangered species or am I talking about something which is, uh, uh, you know, which is not endangered, which is not extinct right now. So this is what they are basically discussing about. So Sneha, Ante, Pahi and uh, Riya and uh, uh, Pari. Uh, fifth word, just now joined. Pari. Pritha. Pritha. Yes, so Pritha, basically what we people were talking about is, see, there will be nothing like that. There is a rhetorical based question or there's something like that. You just have to identify which is closest to that. I have to read, I have my strategies in place that, you know, I'm reading the first line. I'm trying to identify the tone of the author. I'm trying to understand the emotions, that is tone, emotions of the author. From your answers, from your options, you'll be able to understand what am I supposed to see in the passage? What am I supposed to see? What's my job to see? Okay, so first you read the question, options, and then you go with the passage. Because at least you have an idea that what am I trying to do? Otherwise, what happens is in school, I don't know about you people, okay, but other students, what they used to do is they first read the whole passage, and then they will read the question. So what's the point? If I read the question, if I read my options, at least I know it, what am I supposed to do it in the paragraph? Okay, I'll just do it quickly in the paragraph. Are we clear? Okay, Pahi is almost there. Almost. <laughs> okay, so Pahi, Sneha, Ria, and uh, Vita, and Aditya. Now you tell me if you want me to, to tell you anything again. Anything. You feel that you are not clear, or uh, I would just suggest you one thing. If you can just read page number 101, 107. The strategy for answering reading comprehension questions. It's 
it's been given really nicely in the textbook. I mean, they've written it very well, whoever wrote it. Um, so if we can just uh, read that loudly, Pahi, because uh, Preeta and uh, Rhea don't have the textbook. Right, Rhea? So if you can just, Sneha or uh, they can just read it loudly so that she can also hear it. They can also hear it from them. Strategy for answering reading comprehension questions. Sneha, can you please read it? Yes, ma'am. First, read and analyze the passage carefully before trying to answer any of the questions. Second, pay attention to clues that help you understand less explicit as, as aspects of the passage. Third, try to distinguish main ideas from supporting ideas or evidence. Fourth, try to distinguish ideas that the author is advancing from those he or she is merely reporting. Fifth, Try to distinguish ideas that the author is strongly committed to from those he or she advances as hypothetical or speculative. Six, try to identify the main transitions from one idea to the next. Seven, try to identify the relationship between different ideas. Uh, so the subheads are, are they contrasting or consistent? Does one support the other? Does one provide greater detail about the other? Does one apply the other to a particular circumstance? The next one is read each question carefully and be certain that you understand exactly what is being asked. The next is answer each question on the basis of the information provided in the passage and do not re really uh, re rely on outside knowledge. Uh, then in essence, the test is about how quickly one can eliminate answer choices and arrive at the correct one. The last one is a key skill that contributes to an improved score is the speed of comprehension. Any doubt? Sneha, Ria, Mika, Aditya, Pahi? No, ma'am. It's pretty simple. It's been given the reading comprehension strategies. Then we did how to solve contextual ways, explain the detail and all these things, author's tone and all. I would suggest, uh, unfortunately, I do not have something to display in the paragraphs of video because I assume that you would be having the textbook, all of you. So uh, we thought that we will do page number 116, that is the passage one uh, for practice over here. So I'm just wondering how will Rhea and Rita do it? Sneha, uh, Aditya, Aditya, are you there? Yes, ma'am. We can do it on homework. Um, work. Why do you want to do homework? You have so much work. <laughs> so much work you can manage. Priya, uh, you don't have it at home, your textbook. Mom, I have it. I'll probably have to search it. I'm not able to find it. It must be there in the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, at least Neha, Ritya, uh, and Pahi, at least you, you start doing your passage. Okay, let me figure out something for Ria and uh, Parita. Parita now. Ritha, Ritha. Okay, so Sneha, Ritha, be very honest because the answers are obviously there, the solutions. Just don't see those solutions. And read the passage. And uh, till the time, let me just figure out something for Ria and uh, Ritha. Preetha, for you, um, what you can do is, Preetha, you can just see all these uh, slides. Can you access these slides, Preetha? Uh, I don't have the link. Uh, okay. What does, uh, I mean, do they you share? Have to, you have to send this uh, PPT in the group so I can access that. In the, what do I have to do? Group. I don't know how to do that. You mean in the chats? No, we have a group, right, of IPM. I don't know. I'm not a part of it. Okay, so you can send Surjit, ma'am. She'll forward it to us. Okay, no, I thought we can use your 15 minutes and you can finish these things. That's why I thought. Because you don't have a textbook now. Can I just put this on chats? Is it okay? I can think you... so, because I don't think yes, this is a heavy file if it will be able to if you'll be able to send it or not okay uh, 
Let me just do something like this. Um, what you can do is, uh, you can start doing this, Preeta. I've displayed it for you. Okay, Aditya is, anyways, all three of them are all, anyways, doing good text. Okay, Preeta? Yes. You can do it like this. Ria, what will Ria do now? Ria, what you can do is, and you can send the same thing to me as well. Which one, my dear? Uh, Mom, you sent her the PDF, right? No, no, no. I didn't send her the PDF. I just sent her that you do this, uh, the one which I've displayed it over here, the passage, because Preetha was not a part of the class. Now. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. The other people are doing the passage from the textbook. So what are uh, you... Sneha can send me the picture of the passage that she's doing. We have yeah. each other's numbers. Sneha can send it to me. Sneha, Yes, but I don't have phone right now. I have a Jio wala phone. Bye. Bye. You can send it. Yes, I can send it. Yeah, quickly, because we just have 15 minutes. I just want to do one passage at least. Do you people have past papers or something? The access to past papers of IPM? Ma'am, we can maybe ask for it. Yeah, I didn't understand what. We can ask for it if it is available online or the social um, center can provide. I don't have access to it, I know. I thought you people already have access to the uh, those past papers also for the next class. We can finish off those things also. Have you done this uh, verbal ability? Have you people done this? Verbal ability test practice one and two, section 23, section 24? No? Okay, so you people must have done this session 18. Critical reasoning you have done now. Okay, so 19, 20. Critical reasoning was half completed. And then I was to take the remaining uh, exercises today. Oh, that okay. you, I mean, I don't know about this thing. So you, you talk whatever it is. I, I just think about the session 19 reading comprehension. So, so you have not done session 23, 24 also, no? So from now on, will you be taking the lectures or is this just for today? Uh, see, I will be taking the um, from session 19. The today I did session 19, no? Yes. So I will take it further from session 19 onwards, everything. So should, since we have already completed session 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, whatever is left, I will be completing it. Okay, so I don't know about your past thing till session 18. So whatever to do session 18 is, I'm sure you must be having a person who we always communicate or interact or sort out things. Okay, so you, you talk to them directly for such session 18. But from session 19, reading comprehension, I'll do it with you. Okay.
Okay, because we are not dividing uh, pretty complex. Aditya, any doubts? Oh, are you sure? Yes. Okay. So from session 19, I'm taking a rest and you know the stories and everything. I mean, who is taking what, who is taking not, I, I don't know anything. I just know that I'm doing reading comprehension. Okay, so I'll do reading comprehension with you. And whatever doubts you have for reading comprehension, I'll sort it out. This much I know. So I don't know the planning and all how it is to be done by anyone. Ali, how much is that? Uh, question first. Bahi, can you explain me the first four lines, please? What is they talking about? Ma'am, the lines are on August 3, 1492. Christopher Columbus set sail from Palo, Spain, with less than 100 crew members to discover a new route to Asia. After spending a difficult time at sea, the party uh, the party sighted land early on the morning of October 12th. They set foot on an island in the Bahamas, which they named as Salvador. Yes, so, yes. That, so the passage, it is discussing about how like Christopher Columbus um, and its members were finding a new route to Asia. Mm -hmm. So they reached an island there, which they named as, as Salvador. Very good. Ria, you got the passage from her, no? Yes, ma'am. I got the passage and I took the first uh, question also. Like uh, the questions related to the first paragraph. Yes, my dear. Ria, can you just tell me the meaning of the second paragraph? What is it uh, talking about? I'm just a minute, I'll have to go back to the question. I'm sorry, Ria, your voice got uh, cut off. Can you repeat the question? Ma'am, I said just a minute, I'll have to go through uh, sure, sure. the picture again. Yes, please. Take, take your time quickly. And Aditya, you explain me the third paragraph. The native Indians were vastly outnumbered in wars. Uh, Ma'am, in the second paragraph, it actually talks about how the Native Americans actually welcomed the foreigners to their land. But then uh, because of the different practices followed by both the cultures, the uh, differences um, came and then uh, the people were commercially exploited by the foreigners. The Natives were exploited by the foreigners. Yes. Okay, and uh, what do you think about Alex, the third paragraph? What are they talking about? Um, clash of cultures. Okay, yes, one. And they're also talking about some diseases and all. Yes, ma'am. How they were eliminated to a large extent by the actions of the Europeans. Okay, and uh, Sneha? Neha, are you there? I'm saying the right, uh, or the right person, Sneha. Sneha, are you there? She left. She left? Oh, okay. Okay, so the first question, the primary purpose of the passage. What do you guys think? What is the purpose of the passage? What does Ria think? My mind marked option B as the correct. Option B. Pahi? Yes, ma'am, option B. Huh? Somebody's there. Who's there? Okay, Sneha? Not there. Aditya? Um, I think for the purpose of the passage is to provide a snapshot of the discovery of America. Option B. Option B. Okay, we'll go with option B as of now. From for question number two, from the passage, 
as we can infer that in comparison to the Europeans, Native Americans were And they were more respectful. Yes, ma'am, more respectful of nature. What made you say they were more respectful of nature? What is that one sentence which you think that they were very respectful? Any idea? Why do you think they were? Uh, because what I can see over here is, uh, if you can see the third, pa second paragraph carefully, the natives could not stomach the arrogance of the newcomers and scan the scant respect they paid to nature. But Native Americans actually welcomed the pale skinned visitors. They were fascinated. So, do you still think that they were more respectful of nature? Priya, what do you think? Um, I'm the Native American were of course more uh, respectful of nature as compared to the Europeans because it shows that how at first they welcomed them as it should be but later on uh, looking at the disrespect or the scant respect that the Europeans paid to the nature they of course could not tolerate it. I, I agree. Okay what can be inferred from the third paragraph? Who explains the third paragraph? Uh, Aditya. Aditya, what do you think? What can be inferred from the third paragraph? And D. Option B. B for Bombay? No, D. D. The early settlers became arrogant. Okay. Early settlers became arrogant. From third paragraph, I think. The resistance they put up, the unwillingness, the natives, diseases. Okay. Uh, Pahi, what do you think? Mom, I think uh, it is option B as the Native Americans probably attached a lot of importance to and respected nature. Okay, and what do you think, Paria? Mom, I also think the same. It's not. It's not option B. B. Option B. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because. Uh, this is not what they're talking about. Basically, in third, you have to identify the term, that what exactly they're trying to communicate. So, because if you see, they're trying to communicate about the diseases which have been brought up. They're talking about the resistance. Okay, they're also talking about the lifestyle. And uh, they're also somewhere saying that the, how the things were not being used well. So, that is what uh, Ria and Paki was conveying. That, you know, how it is being communicate. That's what we inferred. Okay, question number four. Cannot be inferred. One, two, three. What do you think? Cannot be inferred. Question number four. Alien diseases, early settlers to the early settlers. What do you guys think? Take a two minutes to tell me. Option B. As per option D. Only three. Okay. Okay. Uh, you are Aditya Bhaskar Ayer, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, we have Ria. Ria Nikhil Zanwar, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Pahi. Pahi, Pahi. Pahi, Okay. okay. And we had uh, Ria, right? So Ria is already Ria here. and Neha. Neha. Neha we had, and we also had. Uh, Pritha. Sorry, Pritha. We also have Pritha. Right? No one else, sir. Four were there for eleven thirty to twelve thirty, and five were there from twelve thirty to. 
So, what's your answer, uh, Reepahi? Ma'am, only the second option. Option B. Option B. Aditya, what's your answer? I'm option, option B. D. Okay. And Ria? Option B. Option B. Only B. B for Bombay. And what's the correct answer as for you? No, ma'am. D for dog. I said option D. Okay. So, it's been said that the option B is the correct B for Bombay. And what's the reason? What do you think? Ma'am, because in here it is said that it was totally eliminated, but it was not stated in the paragraph that it was completely eliminated. It was written yes. as virtually eliminated. Yes. Okay. Is everyone clear? Clear with the class? No doubts at all? In case you find something, please bring it in the next class. The first 15 minutes, we'll be quickly, re I'll tell you the idea, we'll quickly recap. Okay, that's what all we did. And uh, I'll be giving you some of the passages and you need to identify the passages, the correct answers, the different options, last year papers, everything. Okay, so that we can identify the right answers and we can be very, very sure about the reading comprehension before we go for the exam. Clear? Anything, please let me know in the next class. You want to do this or you want to repeat this or X, Y, Z, anything which comes to your mind. Okay. Thank you, Pahi, Ria, Aditya, Preeta. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.